Hello there, welcome to Brian Lomax Movie Talk and welcome back to my Alfred Hitchcock season. I'm tackling the trouble with Harry in this one and the trouble with Harry is that, well, it's not actually that great of a film. Yeah, I looked at some reviews from, from other people after this uh, on Letterboxd just to see what the vibe was, just to see if like, was I kind of seen a different film or whatever and it, it seems like I was because a lot of people seem to really like this film uh, and I gotta say for a Hitchcock it's very weak indeed. Now it is from 1955 and it's also written by John Michael Hayes who wrote Rear Window which is kind of one of Hitchcock's best. Going into this I, I, I wasn't kind of that excited by it you know the poster the write-up didn't excite me all that much but then I saw that John Michael Hayes was screenwriter on it you know and coming up just coming off the back of uh, Rear Window I thought okay all right let's keep an open mind so we go into this and yeah I, I, I find it hard to believe that it's the same writer quite frankly or, or even the same director this film is a little bit dull I've got to say and it's not that funny which is quite a shame because it's meant to be a comedy it's a bit of a kind of a dark, twisted comedy, but, but it is meant to be a comedy nonetheless. And I just didn't find it funny. And I didn't like many of the characters. It's just not that they, I guess I didn't warm to them. I, I wouldn't say they're unlikable as such, but th th there's no reason to really get behind them because I don't find them all that believable. The story that unfolds is essentially that this guy thinks he shot this man called Harry. You know, he, he, he mistakenly thinks he shot him, so he tries to bury the body. But in his attempts to bury the body, people keep coming along, stumbling across him. And it turns out that they have a reason not to really like this guy either. And no one really seems to care about this guy who's been shot. They're all really nonchalant about it. It's that initial reaction from all of these characters that, that come our way that kind of takes me out of it. Like, there's no attempt at all to, to make any kind of sense of urgency about getting rid of this guy, about covering it up from anyone. And because it happens so often, so many of these characters keep popping up, in the end I'm just like, I'm out now, I'm kind of out. There's, there's no urgency here, there's no realism here. Now, as the film unfolds, it does get a bit better because reasons are given for why these people would have that attitude towards this guy. But for me, that's more of a internal thing. Like I, don't, I could understand these, these people processing that in an internal way, but the way that they kind of come across this guy who, you know, who thinks he's killed this man and they're so blase with him about it, like, like, like it's nothing, it, I just, I don't buy into it. Much of the attempts at humour I don't find all that funny and a lot of it I find forced, such as the Doctor character who I think I think there's like three times in this film, at least twice, but at least three times they pull this same gag where he's walking whilst reading a book in the middle of nowhere and trips over the body and then just gets back up and, walk, and carries on walking out and it don't work for me, it feels incredibly forced. This film was also the introduction of Shirley MacLaine, who I really like as an actress, particularly in her in her early career. You know, The Apartment is one of my favourite films. It's one of my favourite favourite performances of hers, um, and I do think she's likable here. Her performance, you know, I, I do warm to her probably more than any of the other characters, and that is only by virtue of Shirley MacLaine kind of doing what she does best of, of being this likable persona. Uh, but on the page, there isn't that much to make me warm to her. When you get her story from her, she's essentially a, a spouse who's been abused somewhat. That Yeah, you should sympathise with her more. But because of the attempts at comedy and because of the blasé nature in which they deal with this dead man, I just don't feel connected. I feel the opposite. I feel completely disconnected from everything that's going on. It's a real shame. Um, uh, yeah, you know, coming off the back of Shadow of a Doubt and Rear Window, uh, you know, and, and a few other films that I've, I've missed out from the, these reviews because they're not part of my box set. You know, I'm just going through the films that are in my box set. Um, I, I know that, <laughs> I know that Hitchcock's better than this. I know that he can do better than this, has 
done better than this. Uh, so yeah, this is a real disappointment. Uh, again, John Michael Hayes as well, coming off the back of Rear Window. Uh, I know he did To Catch a Thief as well just before this. So yeah, not enjoyable really. Uh, I give it a two out of five. I think there are some things that, that I did like about it. You know, I liked some of the cinematography and particularly on Blu-ray, it's again, as with Rear Window, it's cleaned up really nicely. It looks very luscious indeed. Uh, just seeing some of those countryside settings, uh, like a, an idyllic kind of town where, where this is based, uh, it, it does feel like a kind of town I would like to live in, you know? Um, it's just a shame that, like I say, the story, everything around it that's going on, not too impressed by. What about you though? Have you seen The Trouble with Harry? And what did you think about it? Do you think I mean too harsh? Do I simply just not get it? Uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section down below and until next time, cracking.